Big Value Big Business Podcast, Episode 14. Welcome to the Big Value Big Business Podcast with James Lynch where we talk with today's most successful marketing minds about getting the right message in front of the right people and getting the right people to become your customers for life. And now, your host, James Lynch. All right, welcome back, my friends, to yet another edition of the Big Value Big Business Podcast. I am your host, James Lynch. I am really big, big, big time super excited about my very special guest today. Her name is Hermione Way. Hermione is a new media journalist, reality TV personality, and a successful entrepreneur. She is the founder of NewsPepper.com, an internet video production company. Hermione was also a featured cast member along with her brother on the Bravo TV reality show, Startups Silicon Valley. Hermione would later launch a global startup competition that can be found at startupworld.info. She is indeed one busy lady, and I am very excited to have her slow down for just a bit to visit with us here for just a short while today. Let's say hello. Hermione Way, how are you today? Very good. Thank you, James. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. I am so excited to have you. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to come out. And um, I'm excited to get your ever so unique perspective on bringing big value in our day-to-day quest for success. Does that sound like a plan? Definitely. I'm, I'm up for it. Whatever you give me, I'm, I'll say yes. You're just going to keep swinging. Yep. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. In America, this- you have this expression, go big or go home, and I love it. So I, li- I live by it. I live by it. Well, I did name my business Big Value Big Business. Yeah, that's that's the right way to go. Right on, right on. Love it. So let's get a, a little history. Now, I think our listeners can probably sense that you're not uh, born in the USA. Maybe um, tell us where you came from and uh, a little bit about your journey that brought you right here to where you are today. Yeah, it's so a fascinating story and um, it's the one that I can't believe every day. I keep having to pinch myself to check that it's actually me that's living this life because I grew up in a little tiny farm in a little village in Devon, which is a county in the south of England. And somehow I'm living this extravagant, amazing, incredible life in San Francisco now where I've spent the past seven years traveling all over the world and meeting people like Richard Branson and meeting various other big names in the world of business and entrepreneurship and I've just had an incredible time and I owe it all thanks to the internet so um, yeah it's it's been a a fantastic journey Um, but to give you a little bit of background as I said I grew up on a farm milking cows in Devon and um, I moved to London when I was about 13 and I did a degree in journalism and that's really when my entrepreneurial journey started and it started with a problem that I had and the problem that I had was I was doing this degree in journalism and my degree was teaching me newspaper journalism but I was like hold on a minute newspapers are dying everything's going online everyone's doing citizen journalism video blogging there is why aren't we being taught this why aren't we being taught how to write online media how to video blog why are we still being taught you know medieval practices of newspaper journalism you know, when I graduate, I'm going to be working in digital, not print. And so I was Googling on the internet of a, of an institution or a place where I could get training in online journalism and video production and nothing existed, nothing. And so I think I was having a conversation with my older brother, who's also an entrepreneur and, um, which helps. And he said, well, why don't you start your own thing? And I said, you're right. I'll start my own thing. And that was, That was how News Pepper was born, and that was 2007, 2008. So I've been going for about six years, seven years now. And um, we just decided to take students and graduates that were doing a media-related course, whether it be journalism or video, and help them get internships and real-world experience actually doing the job that they would become. And, um, yeah, that was was a long time ago. And then (laughs) as soon as I started my first company, people, like, you know, kept covering us, got a little bit of press, 
more people heard about me, asked me to do other things. I kept saying yes, yes, yes. And suddenly here I am in San Francisco. Um, yeah, it's just, it's been an incredible journey. So in, in seven short years, here you are. Yes. And I haven't stopped. I've been living life at a million miles an hour. Um, I've been flying all over the world to places that I didn't even knew existed. And it's just been, you know, an absolutely incredible journey. I've interviewed Mark Zuckerberg. Um, well, not one-on-one, -on -one, but I have, you know, been in the room as a journalist with him and asked a couple of questions. And, you know, Richard Branson hanging out with him was fantastic. And you're just like, how did I get here? How did this little girl from a village in Devon get here? Um, mm -hmm. I, I want to touch on that a little bit too. I, I definitely do. But I always ask... Um, and I, th I think I know the answer, but have you always been an entrepreneur or was there a point in time you actually worked for someone else? Um, I've always been wild. Um, <laughs> at school, I was very, very naughty. I was always the kid that was getting expelled. Um, I would always ask why. Like, the teacher would explain something and I'd say, yeah, but why? She'd be like, because the la la. And I'd be like, yeah, but why is that? Why, why, why? So I wouldn't ever accept just the answer that was given to me. I was probably a pain in the neck for my teachers. Um, but I think that translates well to entrepreneurship, um, you know, cause you always have to sort of, you know, fight the status quo and, you know, look outside the box and bend the rules and, you know, beg for forgiveness rather than ask for permission. And, um, no, but I wasn't always an entrepreneur. I had a job cleaning toilets, um, in a, a friend's, her friend's parents had a hotel. So at the weekends I would clean the toilets, clean the bedrooms, be the chambermaid, and I worked in a chocolate shop for a while and got very fat. Um, so I did have a couple of regular jobs before I got into entrepreneurship. Cool, cool. It, you said, actually, I counted three things that are so indicative of some of the great entrepreneurs that I've had. You said, I just kept saying yes. Yep. Just kept saying yes. Yeah. I always ask why, 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 why? Because the status quo is never good enough. Right, you gotta, you gotta just when people give you an opportunity, you just even if it puts you outside of your comfort zone, you just gotta say yes. And trust me, like I've been outside of my comfort zone for you know so many times. I've had like I got asked to host one of Europe's biggest technology conferences and up on stage in front of three thousand people, you know, seven years ago when I was like twenty three, twenty four years old, and I just said yes and. You know, the whole night before I didn't sleep, I, you know, was so nervous. My hands were shaking. But you know what? I just got up there and forced myself to do it. And every time I've done it since, the nerves have gone away. So you've got to you've got to say yes. You've got to get outside of your comfort zone. And then you just got to keep doing it until you, you know, you learn to cope with it. Yes. Uh, and again, some of the great people that I've talked to on this show, they speak to getting out of your comfort zone. That's the way you make the biggest strides. Yeah, it really is. It really is. Um, you know, I've been on numerous TV shows. I've done, uh, I used to have a regular slot on your news channel talking about technology. Uh, I was racked with nerves. I could hardly talk. I mean, I remember the guy saying, okay, can you put this microphone on your shirt? And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't see that happening these days. No, I mean, now, you know, you, you get to do it so much that you just learn how to, you know, be natural in front of media. Um, but, but yeah, it's pretty scary at first. Hermione, often uh, aspiring entrepreneurs, they don't think they have what it takes or they don't think they're good enough. What, what made you think uh, that seven years ago you had what it takes to get out on your own, build your own empire, and, and, and to move things along? Um, I didn't. I just, just I didn't really ever stop to think about that. I just got out there and did it. And I can remember when I first started News Pepper, you know, it was just me taking out a video camera and going to various free events around London and just taking my video camera, filming the event. I, I remember I used to have to, like, put the camera on a tripod and run around and grab the mic and do the introduction and then run back around around the camera. I mean, you've been there, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I, I love it. I could just see you doing it, too. It's, it's kind, of, kind yeah. of comfortable. But that's how you get started. And it, it's awesome. Look where you are today. It's great. Exactly. And, you know, I, I didn't really um, – I didn't really think that I was good enough. I just kept doing it. And I realized that the more work I put in, the more opportunities would come about. And 
you know, I, I just started Newspepper at the beginning of um, the second dot-com boom and the beginning of the social media revolution. So nobody else in London was really doing like low-cost online video and, and that's really how we grew and people you know heard about us and they were like oh my god we you mean we can make a video for you know a hundredth of the price that this production large production studio charged us we were like yeah and you know word just spread and then we ended up getting clients like the BBC and Parliament and Channel 4 and it was just really saying yes 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 and being open um, and now I'm having to say no to some things it's like said yes so much that I can't actually sleep at night because there's so much going on. <laughs> no, I love it. And that that's not a bad place to be when you have to turn down the opportunities. That's that's great. I love it. So listen, so with, with the many projects that you've taken on, can you, you know, just through your rise, there had to be some speed bumps. Can you share one of your biggest challenges in how you were able to, to get past it? Um, I think for me, I went through a period, especially after I did the Bravo TV show, um, of getting a lot of panic attacks and uh, mm. suffering from insomnia you know sometimes I'd go you know five or six nights without sleeping and you know trying to operate on a bus busy schedule with no sleep is just is diabolical um, but now I just make sure that I you know start to begin to say no to stuff and you know I have a great life partner who helps me relax and we cook at home together and um, but yeah when I was single and living this crazy life you know um, I did tend to get sick and, you know, not be able to slow down. So it, it was your health, basically, and so you've learned through the years to uh, to be able to take care of you first, to be able to yeah, to, to just, keep up you know, this pace. And you, you know, there's so many free events nowadays, and like here in San Francisco, there's probably seven or eight events every night, and you, you can you know, try and hit them all. They've all got free alcohol. Suddenly, you don't realize how much you're drinking every night, and you know your health starts to deteriorate and yeah, I think now I'm just really focusing on myself and my health and doing a lot of yoga and exercise, which is great. That's great. Yeah, and I'd like to get into some of those, uh, maybe those routines that help you be the best you can be a little further in our chat. So so tell us, just uh, still focusing on business, what is your, um, if you had a mission statement or a value proposition, or, or, what would that be right now? Hmm, that's a good one. I think just say yes. Um, I love that. I think if you're out there and you're like, you know, you haven't got a job or you you hate your job and you want to do your own thing, first of all, what do you love? What do you love doing? I believe that every single one of us, every single human being on this planet has a passion, whether that passion is gardening or making hats or, I don't know, doing yoga. And with the internet, you can now monetize your passion. There's going to be somebody else in the world that shares the thing that you love. And if you can, you know, stop creating content around that thing that you love it's never been easier to, to start a business now it's never been easier to reach a global market and, and you have all the tools you need to do that in a laptop and uh, and the internet connection so you know just go out there say yes um and go big or go home <laughs> so those are those are at the core of, of your mission say yes don't be afraid to get out of your comfort zone but go big or go home Exactly, exactly. Follow your passion. There's got to be somebody that's out there that's doing it. Find out what they're doing, how they're doing it, and do it better. Yeah, yeah. And start, you know, start with the problem that you have. You know, what what irritates you? Like, does your, your coffee machine not make your coffee in the right way in the morning? Or does your shoes always slip off? You know, invent, invent a better coffee machine or invent a better shoe. There is always another way of doing things. You know, when the iPhone came out, We'd had five years of other manufacturers making smartphones. You know, Nokia, they had a smartphone. You know, there's and various Android smartphones with the same features as Apple. But what Apple did is they just did it way better. And they, they made it simpler and made it easy to use. And, um, you know, there's always another way of, of doing it. And you know what? If you fail, you can always go and get a job again. So what's the harm in trying? Absolutely, absolutely. And when you talk about Apple and and, and the other the predecessors, they say who? <laughs> There's only Apple for yeah. for most of us. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, I mean, I just think we're living in a time, really exciting time, where um, you know, if you want to build a gardening business or you know sell hats online, you can. There's no there's no barrier to entry anymore. It's only your your confidence or your 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 you know 
your fear stopping you. Um, so get out there, you know, start doing some research and monetize your passion and, you know, spend a life doing something that you love rather than stuck in a cubicle working for some douchebag having to travel an hour in traffic every day, two hours in traffic, and a job you hate, you know, which leads to an unhappy life. Why not choose a happy life over an unhappy life? And you can do that with the internet. That's resounding, and I'm going to play that clip over and over again. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> How about now, you're a wild child. You, you know, it's, it's all about yes, and let's get it done. Yeah. But you're a businesswoman. What mm -hmm. do you do? Um, you mentioned now cutting back on, on your social life as you get older and a little bit settled. Um, yeah. what, what do you do for productivity, accountability? How do you stay moving forward and on schedule and always moving and improving these days? Um, I have a very clear expectations of people from the beginning. So, um, you know, I make sure that I fulfill my expectations that people have of me. And I expect other people to fulfill their ex my expectations of them. So, you know, before I go into business with someone, I always uh, make sure we draw up a contract. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be a six-page contract. It could just be like an email outlining, you know, what each party have uh, have agreed. But you know, I, I I think that's essential to 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 um, have a good business relationship with people. And also, you know, in business, there's a lot of politics. Um, there's a lot of things that are not going to happen in the way you want them. And a big part of what goes wrong and what doesn't happen, you just have to say, okay, well, we learned from that experience. Let's try it again and make it better next time. You, you can't hold on to stuff. A lot of people, something goes wrong and they hold on to it and they, you know, they carry that stress with them and they carry that, like, baggage with them. You just got to let it go and be like, okay, that business relationship didn't work out or that person you know, didn't deliver or this didn't happen. But, you know, we're always going to move forward and make it better next time. And also another tip is always pay people and always pay people on time. And uh, I've actually made the mistake before of, um, you know, being a lazy uh, boss and not paying people on time. And people don't want to work for you in the future. You know, you call them up and say, got this great job you know it's like ten thousand pounds or ten thousand dollars they're like sorry i've gone with someone that actually pays me on time so you know always pay your vendors on time always pay your staff on time is very very important and um also you know you can be nice in business without being a douchebag you know like richard branson he's a great businessman very very savvy but he's actually a nice human being he's not a douchebag he doesn't treat people like I think um, a lot of people fall into the mistake of just because they get a bit of money and power, they think you know they're the boss of everyone, and they you know start to treat people badly and they get on a power trip. But just remember that you know that life is always full of ups and downs. So when you might be up one year, the next year you might be down. So it doesn't take a lot to be nice to people. That is such great advice, and from such a, a young lady, but very well seasoned, very well business savvy. That is awesome. I like that well seasoned. You mm -hmm. are. <laughs> You're well, young, but well seasoned. I'll have to say. Yeah, I've, I've said a lot. It's been interesting. It's been very interesting. That's great. That's great. Where do you get your inspiration from? You know, I mentioned him before, but I really do love Richard Branson. I mean, the problem that I have with entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley is. They're amazing entrepreneurs. I mean, you heard about the WhatsApp deal, seventeen billion, right? Mm -hmm. Making huge amounts of money, but they don't have fun in life. They, they, you know, they think if you're not, you know, working on your your next startup straight away, or, um, you know, working fifty hours a week and tearing your hair out, then you're not a real entrepreneur. But the thing I like about Richard Branson is he makes billions of dollars. He makes a lot of money, but he has a lot of fun doing it. He he enjoys his time. He he likes to like enjoy life and you know spend his money on helping other people enjoy life with him and um, he has a very relaxed laid back nature about business which I think other entrepreneurs don't tend to have. And you're trying to or you're you're trying to live that that type of business life with a balance. Exactly, exactly, and it's hard, you know, because the more you put in, the more success you get, and success is a very addictive thing. I, I would say I've been addicted to, to success and addicted to being online in the past couple of years, but now I'm learning to, 
you know, get away from that and actually, you know, live life and do things that are non-business related. Fantastic. And I'm going to get to that. Um, actually, we're, we're rounding up uh, to wrap up, but this is the, the good stuff. Now, I want to talk about like what you got going on present day, your current projects and, you know, where we can find you hanging out. So um, well, what's what's top of mind? What's going on with Hermione these days? I have got so many fingers in so many pies. Let's so go. I'm I want like, to start it with number one and I want to go all the way to number 10. Let's do it. <laughs> So number one is Startup World, and it's a global competition to find the world's best startups. So think of Shark Tank. It's kind of like Shark Tank for startups. Um, and we're trying to locate startup ecosystems outside of Silicon Valley. So last year, we traveled to 25 countries. We hold, hold pitching events where entrepreneurs get up and pitch their ideas. And then we have the grand final in Silicon Valley, where we, we fly all the regional winners to the valley. And that's a really great, great project. You can find that at startupworld.info. Um, number two is Hollywood Meets Silicon Valley. So uh, it's a conference that I produce at Sundance Film Festival every year. And it's basically to track the convergence between Hollywood and Silicon Valley. There's actually a new uh, Mike Judge HBO show coming out about Silicon Valley. And, you know, House of Cards was original series by Netflix. So, you know, Hollywood is changing very, very quickly because of the tech companies being built in Silicon Valley. I mean, you, 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 you yourself are a content creator now because of the internet, and um, we uh, we produce that con conference to track the convergence between the two industries. And then I uh, consult for a company called Treksoft. I run their marketing. We're a software as a service for tour and activity companies. So if you are, have a rafting company or want to take people's on, people on tours of Boston, you can actually set up a profile on their software and start making money and taking bookings straight away. Um, and then what else do I do? God, I have newspaper.com. We do video production. Um, I blog for various blogs, uh, Tech City News, The Next Web, um, Tech Fluff TV. How can we find you? How can we get in touch with you online? Where, where, where are you hanging out? Um, Facebook forward slash Hermione Way at Hermione Way on Twitter. Um, I'd probably say I'm, I'm using Facebook more these days over Twitter. Mm. Um, of course, you can just email me Hermione Way at gmail.com. Um, so yeah, lots of places and I'm, I'm very open to, to getting stuck in and helping people. You've been very generous with your time and uh, you were really easy to talk to and, and get to come on the show. I really appreciate it. And we look forward to checking in with you, seeing how all these great projects are doing. Yep. Brilliant. Thanks so much, James. Thank you, Hermione. You have a great day. All right. And you. Yeah, take care now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. All right. I hope you enjoyed our chat today with Miss Hermione Way. Please visit Hermione at Facebook.com forward slash Hermione Way. That's H-E-R-M-I-O-N-E-W-A-Y. Or on Twitter at Hermione Way. You can find the show notes and the highlights of this interview at BigValueBigBusiness.com forward slash episode 14. Or just go to BigValueBigBusiness.com and type Hermione, that's H-E-R-M-I-O-N-E, into the search box for easy access. Hey, and while you're on the site, take a second to leave a comment, if you would, either about this interview or about the podcast overall, or tell me what you would like to hear us talk about. Give me any questions or challenges you may have with your business. I'd love to be able to find the expert that would have the answers that you need and have them on the show. So talk to me over at BigValueBigBusiness.com. Hey, you can also listen to the show on iTunes. It would really mean a lot to me if you would subscribe to the show and leave a review there if you would be so kind. And as always, I really hope we brought some big value into your day today. You take care, and I'll be talking to you again real soon. Thanks for listening to the Big Value Big Business Podcast at www.bigvaluebigbusiness.com.